So today we're going to be doing the six month update on our grafted fig that already now has fruit. Let's go check that out and talk about all the benefits of a multi grafted fig tree. A lot of these principles apply to your multi grafted whatever fruit tree as well. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Gangs, where we grow cool plants and authors saving the world with the home garden. And today we're going to be doing a six month update on our newly grafted fig tree that even though it's new, has quite a bit of fruit. So here we are now at the base of what was originally the Grandpa Saman green fig tree. And as you can see, it's now about, I don't know, about five or six inches wide. Um, extremely established, multi-trunk, at least five really good trunks coming off that central tree trunk. And as you come up, you can see that just about every single leaf is producing figs. And we're gonna pick this one here, which ideally we're gonna wait about another day or two for it, but look at how large these figs are. And let's just check out how beautiful these are on the inside. How beautiful and nutritious. So my two favorite grafts, check this out. Martinica Ramada, and the other one is the Tiger Panache Fig. The Martinica Ramada, as you can see here, is a striped fig, as you can see when it's green, and eventually becomes more of a dark fig and a berry flavored fig as well. Check out, again, the variegated branching. And now these are the Tiger Panache figs. Such a beautiful contrast on, again, these Grandpa Simon figs. Here's another fruit which we're gonna leave for about another day. They should be hanging a little bit more. The sweetness will intensify about twice as much in just the next 24 hours. If you come in over here, you'll see another one of our grafts, which we labeled right there. You can see right at the tip of my pruners, it says VDS for the Violet de Solis, which we got from the Texas boys. And you can see we've successfully grafted it right in here. Protected with the ivory organics, which we're going to recoat, and we've even got initial fruit set on these too. So you can see it's kind of more of like a spaceship, space saucer, flat so far developing fig. Over here we've got the black Madeira KK fig, which again this here is all sucker growth. Let me get it out of the way so you can see better what's happening. This is all Grandpa Simon rootstock fig, let's call it. I'm just gonna print it out quickly like that. But here is the, the BMKK variety that somehow fell out of this graft that we attempted. So we're just gonna cut back this entire branch with the failed graft so that all the resources from below the graft, from here, go to benefit this Violet de Solis. For this Violet de Solis to continue thriving and performing well here, we got to check for the competition surrounding it as well. So another grafting tip is we're going to pull some of these neighboring branches back and we're simply training it so that each of the respective grafts has sufficient light because with light, the grafts are going to have energy to then develop and compete with the rootstock growth. If again, we're enjoying the fruit off of that, in addition to balancing the vigor between other grafts, some grafts might be grown really fast and other grafts really slow. And by keeping the faster growth in check by pruning, we're gonna be able to allow the slow, slower developing grafts to have a chance at becoming a part of this tree structure. Otherwise, it's gonna get smothered and drowned by the shade created by the vigorous growth surrounding it. So you can see by pulling all of these branches back, and again, even though this fig would be better in another day or two, I'm gonna take it now because I'm actually taking this entire branch out. And again, try to drive all the resources from this branch to go and to benefit our grafted wood as we've got tons 
of rootstock wood with fruit. So again, this zone we're dedicating to this successful graft. So check this out. The Violet de Solis now has its own grow zone and you gotta respect each of the grafts that you have on your multi-grafted fig tree. As we go in again, you can see the variegated fig over here for the Panache Tiger fig. And I'm following, so that's this branch. You'll follow this larger branch up and then there's some sucker growth just below the Martinica Ramada graft, which is right where my finger is. This here is all Grandpa Saman sucker growth. So we're gonna cut that off. And now all the resources from this upper branch goes to Martinica Ramada, lower branch, tiger fig. Each of them has their own respective area for light. Again, Panache Tiger, check out how tall that is. Martinica Ramada, they're competing. They're about equal in height. Martinica Ramada also pushed out a second lateral branch that's wrapping around. We're gonna allow that to continue for now. The next helpful tip when it comes to your grafted fruit trees is there may attempt to fruit as all of these grafts that we put on are pushing out fruit. It's important to remove them, especially in that first year. It's kind of like a graft is equivalent to a broken arm and you're telling it to hold more weight being the weight of the fruit and it's basically going to take away from the success of your grafts if you allow them to carry more pounds on a branch that's still healing. So allow it to heal in that first year and take off that fruit as hard as it's gonna be. As hard as it is to remove the fruit, it's gonna result in that graft succeeding and healing better that first year so you can enjoy those many pounds of fruit in each of the successive years to follow. But if you get too greedy and allow too much fruit to set on those first year grafts, you may end up losing it. So you may have noticed that some of these grafts still have their ties still on them. You wanna make sure that if you've still got the grafting ties on there, that it's not constricting the flow of water and nutrients from going to the graft. And obviously the leaves are producing proteins and sugars as well that need to make their way down to the roots. But this here is our nylon string, basically fishing string method that we use for grafting. Um, again, I'm gonna highlight some of those helpful tips towards the end of this video where you can see what this was like before. And obviously you can see the success that we're enjoying today. So what we're gonna do next is use the Ivory Organics three-in-one plant guard protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. And it's for use on your fruit trees, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And it's for use in organic gardening, healthier than latex and tar-based products. I'll explain in a minute. Um, why? And it's on listed for organic use, whether you be an organic orchard producing organic produce or a backyard gardener that's just wanting to do the right thing. This here gives you an organic way. I've already added water um, a few minutes ago before this lesson, and I'm just stirring it up to get all of the contents in contact with one another, which include these natural seven oils, which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And then these base ingredients that are basically help create a bond, almost as strong as paint, but in an organic way, which includes diatomaceous earth, which is also an insect repellent by protecting our grafting wounds. So if you come in this way, you can see that between the scion over here, which is the grafted wood, and then the root stock where we cut into it, you can see that there's a significant gap, a perfect entry, entryway for beetles and termites, um, pests to lay eggs in there, and also disease entryway and can contribute towards the failure of your successful graft. And so once your grafts have successfully taken, it's time to immediately protect those grafts with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, which again has diatomaceous earth, which is an insect repellent. And then the oils also offer insect and rodent, as well as also helps control disease issues as well from happening. And so we're protecting the graft, we're filling in all those nooks and crannies and anywhere that you see excess light, you can also coat, and that's gonna help protect the wood from the risk of first, second, and third degree burns, so that that way the tree, instead of wasting resources on repairing sunburn damage, can focus more on growing, flowering, and fruiting. With all of our prune branches, we're also gonna protect it 
and you may want to wait a day or two before coating them to make sure that they're dry first as they may continue to push out sap but you're also going to want to coat these surfaces and you're going to be protecting them as you would also your roses um, as it says here on the label to prevent the risk of beetles and termites entering this wood it doesn't have the bark and it doesn't have the sap to protect it from the entry of disease and pests and so we're basically closing all those up you can see over here this here was pruned about a year ago and you can see the center of it the pith has hollowed out we're going to want to fill that in because again those are all entryways that can result in pests invading the tree and shortening the life of this fig tree that we truly love and want to last here on the property for many many more years to come and here we go, protecting the graft from the backside as well. So as we mentioned earlier, the reason that this is a healthier protection for, than latex and tar-based products, aside from the fact that it's for organic gardening and latex paint and tar-based products are not for organic gardening, is that the product dries on porous, allowing moisture and nutrients and air to pass while still protecting those surfaces. If you're using latex and tar-based products, and there's a ton of research you can find on your own, it basically traps moisture and contributes towards underlying rot. This offers your plants a much healthier alternative where you need a prune seal than using latex and tar-based products to protect those surfaces. And don't forget to label your grafts. So this one here is the VDS for Violet de Solis and we'll remember it from those initials. So it's midsummer. It's important to also be feeding your plants with Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers. It's gonna give your plants all six plant macronutrients in one product. That includes your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. In addition to the super blend is fortified with azomite, which is crushed volcanic rock to give your plants a lot of the micronutrient nutrition. The light hours are peaking, daylight hours are hot, and the plant's metabolism is at an all-time high. And in order for your plants to continue performing all season long, you gotta make sure you keep on feeding your plants at least three times a year, starting in spring and summer, and then one more time in early fall to make sure that that plant has all the macronutrient nutrition so they can continuously perform from year to year. So I wanna leave you with these fun facts before we then take you to a blast from the past where you get to see the way we grafted this fig tree behind me, just a few of the highlights from that video published six months ago. If you wanna watch in the entirety, I'll put that link in the video description below, or you can find it in the upper left corner right now. I'll put that link there for you so you can go and delve right into those grafting techniques that created this success story here behind me. But some of the fun reasons I wanna share with you on why you should create multi-grafted fruit trees, such as this multi-grafted fig tree, is one, it's fun. How cool is this? This is a showcase fruit tree here on the property. The owner's excited about it, I'm excited about it. And everyone that comes here to visit this property is going to be excited to see all of these different fruits hanging off of one tree trunk. It's such a cool sight to see. Another reason to create a multi-grafted fig tree, such as this one here behind me, is who's got the room to plant four fig trees? Check out how massive this tree is. And if we wanted to enjoy four flavors of figs, we need the footprint land space for four mature sized fruit trees like that. And then the other issue that follows with that is if it's just for one or two people that are enjoying figs on your property, that's gonna be a lot of figs that you're gonna to have to take in in a short period of time of about one to two months. So the benefit of having a multi-grafted fruit tree is that you're enjoying a lot of flavors of figs. The other cool part too is each of the figs have its own ripening season. So you can actually extend the season so you're enjoying figs over a longer period of time. Other fruit trees such as apples, you can enjoy apples over a course of about six months by you know, grafting on early harvesting varieties, mid-season varieties, and late-season varieties to basically enjoy one tree over a greater period of time. And that's an important principle for the backyard growers such as me and most of you that are watching. For the commercial grower, these principles don't quite necessarily apply as they've got unlimited space and unlimited resources. And at the end of the day, they're not eating that fruit. It's predominantly going to market to be sold. Another very important reason for multi-grafted fruit trees is it improves cross-pollination. Even for your fruit trees that are self-fruitful, such as figs, you actually end up improving fruit yields, fruit set, fruit quality, and even fruit size. And there's a ton of research to support that 
by increasing cross-pollination between related fruits, whether they be figs or apples or citrus or even from your prunus families, cherries, peaches, almonds, and so forth. By having two varieties nearby one another, they actually improve fruit set because of cross-pollination. That seed actually holds on better, creating, again, better fruit, better quality, and higher yields. Another benefit of having a multi-grafted fruit tree. One more tip I want to share with you is when it comes to grafting is that you can control the tree size. Had I grafted this multi-grafted fig tree on a blackjack rootstock, blackjacks naturally grow only about eight to 10 feet on average. And so you're going to have a more dwarf, um, semi-dwarf sized tree compared if you put it on a black mission, for example, that may want to grow 25 to 30 feet tall. So you're going to be having to control a much more vigorous, faster growing tree compared to a blackjack tree that's a lot slower growing and more manageable of a tree size, more ideal for maybe a container life. So um, starting off with our right rootstock is important and critical when deciding what you're gonna be introducing those grafted flavors on as well. So these are all the benefits of what a grafted, multi-grafted fruit tree can do for you in your garden. Let me now introduce you to some of the highlights of a blast from the past on the multi-grafted fig tree behind me. Um, here are just some of the highlights I hope you enjoy. If you want to watch the lesson in the entirety, just feel free to click on the link in the below video description. And I hope you found this lesson informative, educational, and if so, be sure to give us that thumbs up. Most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. If this is your first time here on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to join America's leading garden product YouTube channel. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all Happy gardening.